So Nissan GTR Boost Controller. Race One Boost Controller allows instant adjustment of the target boost pressure using the cruise, cruise control switch. Choose a different maximum allowed boost pressure for each of the four map switch modes. Target boost pressure is shown on the boost gauge during the adjustment mode. Wrap around boost gauge feature which will display boost levels greater than one and a half bar or 21 psi. So Ecutec Race 1 boost controller is found under the Race 1 maps category. While we're using the Race 1 uh, boost controller we can set the minimum and maximum and the increment amount as shown here. So the standard settings that we preset um, almost like a stage 1, stage 2 setting is 1.3 bar. But if we had a car we only want to run one bar in mode 1, we simply enter one there, uh, maybe mode 2, uh, we just interpolate down. So what we're going to end up here is one bar is the maximum we can select in mode 1, 1.1 in mode 2, 1.2 in mode 3 and 1.3 in mode 4. Now this is the maximum that's allowed to be selected but just because we put in here let's for example fill with 1.4 1.4 bar. Okay so we can choose or potentially choose 1.4 bar in each mode. Now if we go to boost and boost target this is our target boost pressure. Make it bigger so we can see everything. So you can see the map's been profiled to 1.25 bar, dropping away to 1.05 up the top end. So the race one boost controller is set to 1.4 bar. This is the maximum that's allowed. But we've only profiled the car for 1.25 bar, dropping to 1 bar at the top end. So we might be able to select 1.4, but we're never going to get it. The maximum boost pressure we're going to get is 1.25, dropping to 1.05 at the top end. If we were to fill this with 0.9 bar, then the customer can set up the boost pressure at 0.9 bar. Even though he's got 1.25 in his map, he's never going to achieve that because the maximum has been set to 0.9 bar. This is the minimum 0.5 bar. Some of the high powered cars, some of the high powered cars might have one bar actuators, so obviously you'd increase this to a minimum of one. The customer won't be able to go below one bar or two bar absolute. But this is the increment step. When using the race on boost controller to step between the pressures, uh, 0.1 bar. And as I say, we've set to 0.9 here. If we had a profile map, maybe we were running uh, 1 1.5 through the mid-range, drop into 1.3 at the top end. Some pretty rough tuning there. Plot the map. But if we've got our maximum set up at one bar, then we may have 1.5 bar in our boost target map, but we're only ever going to get one bar. If we drop it away to one bar at the top end, we view showing that colored on shape. If we were to set our maximum in each mode to 1.5 bar, we'll get 1.5 bar in the mid range, but we're only going to end up with one bar at the top end. Now, um, a few people fail to realize how to set this up. So I'm just going to go through it now. If we had a big turbo car, we set to 1.7 bar at the top end, but we only want about 1.3 bar through the mid-range. And we interpolate it, just make it look pretty. So we see we've got a profile map climbing to 1.7 bar at the top end. We're going to need to set the maximum up to 1.7 bar. So let's say in mode 1, 1.7 bar. So the customer can go all the way up to 1.7 bar and select it. But when we do the power run, we're not going to get 1.7 bar at 4,000 revs at peak torque. We're only going to get 1.4. 
and then it's slowly going to climb to 1.7. But just because we've got maximum allowed of 1.7, and just because the customer increases the race on boost controller on the display all the way up to 1.7, doesn't mean he's going to get it all the time. The boost to come in, in this particular instance, it will climb to 1.4, and then climb to 1.7 up the top end. In addition, we've got a coolant temperature, an Equitec race on coolant temperature, display, maximum allowed, sorry, um, where we profile um, the desired boost to stop it creating too much boost when it's cold. So at 10 degrees, the maximum allowed is 0 0.7 bar. By 75 degrees coolant temp, we say 1.5 bar. The engine starts to overheat, we pull it down again. Uh, default settings we've put in. If you want to change it, feel free to set it up exactly how you want. It's adding protection at High cooling temps, low cooling temps, um, stop you getting too much boost pressure. Up, upshift prevention. This um, is shown in the help manual as a good screenshot of how this map works. This is reducing wastegate duty during gear shift. If you've got a GTR, say standard turbos, you're running around 1.1, 1.2 bar. When you change gear, the car would overboost. It's suddenly doing 1.2 bar. You change gear 6,000 RPM, revs come down to 5,000, the boost would spike to about 1.4 bar. Using the wastegate multiplier, we can reduce the wastegate duty during gear change against time. So at 0.8 bar, we don't touch the wastegate duty at 1 bar, we reduce it by 50%. At 1.2 bar, we're zero in it. So stopping the overboost, because from 1.2, we don't want it going up to 1.4s and 1.6s. Very important map. With big turbos, this can be profiled and you can adjust the time axis as well. Big turbos set it up so that you've got complete control of the boost during gear change. So this is the um, race run boost controller using the factory boost control system. With custom maps, it's also possible to set up your own uh, boost control with uh, design boost, target boost pressure, base wastegate duty, um, along with integral and proportional and temperature compensation maps, which we'll go through later. It's very easy to um, put your settings that you may be used to straight into custom maps.